Hello guys, welcome to my channel. This is the 54th tutorial in this course and in this tutorial we are going to talk about two-dimensional arrays. Now you can think of a two-dimensional array as a table. So just as you have rows and columns in a table and at the intersection of rows and columns you store information, you do the same thing using two-dimensional arrays, right? So what we're going to do in this tutorial is we are going to have a look at an Excel sheet that I have uh, prepared. It has some data and then we're going to try to learn to store the same information that I have in the Excel sheet in a two-dimensional array in a C program, right? So let me show you guys the Excel sheet first. This is what this is what it looks like. So I have uh, some values and uh, these are numbers on four rows and in four columns, right? So the rows are numbered one, two, four, and the columns are named A, B, C, and D. And uh, in the first row, I have 10, 15, 20, and 25. In the last one, I have 30, 60, 90, and 120. So <clears throat> I want to store this information, like this entire matrix in a two-dimensional array. And uh, let me get back to my code blocks IDE. And as you can see, I have saved a file already. I have given it the name 2 underscore dimension underscore arrays dot C. And on line 1 in this file, I have the stdio.h header file. On line 2, I have uh, declared the main function and then I have the curly braces for the main function. And between the braces, I have some code. So we're going to try to understand what this code is and uh, we'll see what it does. So you can probably make out by now that on line 4, I have an array declaration and that's because an identifier name is followed by pairs of square brackets. But this is different from what we've seen thus far in this course. We've only checked out single dimensional arrays. And, in a sing and for a single dimensional array, when you declare it, you just have to put one pair of square brackets after the array name. But for a two dimensional array, you have to put two pairs, right? So in the first pair, I have the number four. In the second one, I have the number four too. So what this means is that my array is going to have four rows and it's going to have four columns, right? So the number that goes in the first pair of square brackets indicates the number of rows that the array is going to hold. And the second one denotes the number of columns. Right, and uh, the data type of this array is int, that's integer. So what this means is that all the elements in this array have to be um, of integer type, right? So all have to be integer numbers, decimal numbers, and you cannot have floats. So um, the total number of elements in this array, you can obtain that by multiplying the numbers that are there between the square brackets, right? So uh, you multiply four by four, that's 16. So the array ARR in total is going to have 16 elements. Next we're going to see how we have to store the information that we saw here in the Excel sheet into this array. So you can see that I have the assignment operator on line 4 after I have put the pairs of square brackets and I've specified the number of elements that the array is going to hold by specifying the number of rows and columns. Then I have the opening curly brace for the array initialization and I also have a corresponding closing curly brace on line number 9. Right, and that's followed by a semicolon. So this entire thing makes one C statement. And the reason why I have spanned it over multiple lines is because I want to make this program readable. So white space doesn't play a role here, right? So you can have all the uh, individual sets of values on one line, but I don't want that because that would just make things hard for us to understand. So after the opening curly brace for the ARR array initialization, I have a, a pair of curly braces and between those braces I have the values that I want to be stored in the first row, right? So I have 10, 15, 20 and 25 between the first pair of curly braces and then I have a comma symbol, right? So this comma will indicate to the compiler that this set has to be in the first row and what's going to follow is going to be on the second row, right? So the second set obviously is contained within curly braces as well. So is the third set and so is the fourth set. And after you've uh, mentioned all sets, you don't have to put a comma after the last set. You just have to put the closing curly brace for the R initialization and you have to put a semicolon to terminate the statement. Right, so I hope this is clear. And on line 10, I have declared two integers and I've given them names i and j. And these variables I'm going to use as control variables for my loops. So on line 11, I have a for statement that uses the i uh, variable as the control variable and it has the initial value 0 and it's going to loop till 3, right? So the indices for the first element in the ARR array are going to be 0 and 0 and the indices for the last element are going to be 3 and 3, right? So that's why we're going to loop from 0 to 3. 
And uh, within the body of this for loop, I have another for statement that uses j as the control variable. And that again is going to have the value zero initially and it's going to loop till three. And uh, between the curly braces for this for statement on line 15, I have a printf statement that is going to display the name of the array first, which is ARR. So ARR is going to be displayed as is. And then uh, in two pairs of square brackets, I have the percentage D format specified twice. So the first percentage D format specifier is going to be replaced by the value I. The second one is going to be replaced by the value J. And uh, then you have another percentage D format specifier that's going to be replaced by the value of the element that uh, is going to be obtained using the values in i and j right and then you have the new line escape sequence in the end because we want each element value to be displayed on the fresh line so let me build and run this program and show you guys the output so there you go we see that arr00 contains 10 arr01 which is the second element contains 15 and then the last element contains 1 to 9 6 so all elements have been printed right so you can do a lot of interesting uh, stuff using two dimensional arrays and we're probably going to check out more applications of it in this course or in some other course uh, that I make on C programming, you know, some advanced stuff. And uh, you can have uh, different multi dimensional arrays. Actually, two dimensional array is the simplest multi dimensional array. And uh, that's why I discussed it. I just wanted to give you guys uh, an insight into what multi dimensional arrays are. And this is a very deep subject, so you can explore it on your own if you wish to. And uh, I just wanted to discuss this much in this tutorial. And thank you so much for watching this. And uh, please subscribe to my channel in case you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next one in which we'll discuss something interesting for sure. So please stay tuned for updates.